Hi everybody, my name is Mary Purvis and welcome to Online Astronomy. Um, I am so excited to be sharing this semester with you and this introductory video we're going to talk about a little bit about the equipment you're going to need, um, how the class is going to generally flow, and I want to introduce myself because we're going to be spending a lot of time together. So I am going to wander over to some PowerPoints because some notes will keep me from wandering off into the pucker brush. So this is Introduction to Astronomy. Uh, this semester, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about so many cool things. Black holes, the history of astronomy, the life cycle of stars. You're going to learn some constellation about our planets, about our beautiful sun. Just lots of really nifty stuff. Um, this is me, Mary Purvis. I've been teaching at CBTC for many years. And um, I am a gardener. I love my garden. I'm a ham radio operator. I truly do love astronomy and physics is the other subject that I teach. And at any point during the semester, if you have questions, please ask. I will do my very, very best to be of assistance. Supplies. What do you need for this course? Well, you do need a textbook. And this is the book that we are going to use, The Cosmos by Jay Pasikoff and Alex Filipinko. Um, you may have seen these two gentlemen if you ever watch The Universe or any of the science shows on Discover or some of those science-y channels. When I was choosing a textbook, I wanted something that was scientifically sound and written by scientists. So uh, these gentlemen are very well respected in the field. Alex Filipinko was very close to getting a Nobel Prize for his work in astronomy a few years back. These are, these are good guys. This is a very picture-heavy book, lots of really good illustrations and images. Students ask all the time, do I need to buy the book? Well, the honest-to-goodness answer is yes. You're going to have 15 assignments directly out of the book, and so that's going to be tricky to do without the textbook. If you are pinching your pennies, I will put a copy of the book on reserve in the library, the CBTC library, and you may check that out of the reserve section at the circulation desk, but you can only check that out for two hours at a time. So be aware that that is available to you. You also need to do some math. Please don't be frightened. This is a low mathematical course, but you do need to be able to do some calculating for this class. Pencils are handy as well as pens because we're human and we make mistakes. And there's one piece of special astronomical equipment that I ask you to get, and that is a planisphere. Now, the planisphere you can get through our bookstore book here at CBTC, and it is for 40 to 50 degrees latitude. That is for the upper part of the North American continent. Um, if you have taken astronomy in the past or you grew up liking stars, you might have one of these around your house. If you have one that says 30 to 40 degrees, 30 to 40 instead of 40 to 50, that's okay. It probably is good enough for what we are going to do. Fear not, this is not a high mathematical course. Um, there will be some simple calculator math. I will help you set up the things that you do need to calculate, but and there is no complex math on the tests. The, the most you're going to have to do is a little subtraction, addition, and multiplication or division. And I'll show you how to do that. So this is not a high-level math class. And I mention that because some people get nervous about math. How's the class going to flow? Well, we're going to have 15 individual lessons, approximately one per week. And if you happen to be taking this class in the summer, summer school runs twice as fast. So you're going to go through about two of those a week. Um, you're going to receive the instruction for the class through videos made by me, your instructor. And then interspersed, there's going to be some supplemental videos. These are videos from YouTube where people have done some cool demonstrations that I simply cannot do with a PowerPoint and a mouse and my voice. 
Um, there are going to be reading guides out of the textbook. Those are those study guides. You're going to be doing labs. We'll discuss those more in the next video. You're going to have a 10 question weekly quiz. 10 questions, not a big deal. Uh, you can use your notes. You can use whatever you have access to for those 10 question quiz. It is time to, to put a little pressure on you to study ahead of time. And then there's a midterm and a final. But that's how the class will flow. The points, there's a study guide for each chapter, there's a lab weekly, and there's a quiz weekly with a midterm and a final. About a thousand points throughout the semester, a standard 60, 70, 80, 90 percent grading scale, and uh, so nothing wacky or weird, that's how the grades are going to work. The schedule. I like a rhythm and flow to my classes, and so everything is going to always be due midnight Sunday. Now, the dates will change depending upon the particular semester you are taking the class, but every week there is going to be a study guide, a lab, and a quiz. Study guide, lab, quiz, study guide, lab, quiz. You kind of get the idea. And they are all due midnight Sunday. So I like something that you as a student can count on. Uh, the only things that are going to be weird are a midterm and a final, and on those weeks we do not have labs. So I understand that you're going to have to study, and the midterm and final will take you more time. A word or two about the fact that this is an online course, but it is not a self-paced course. What does that mean? That means that there will be due dates weekly. Uh, you are responsible for turning things in every single week. So please try really hard not to fall behind. Um, late work, I only accept late work one week late, and that is for half credit. Now, that being said, if you have an extreme situation, and when I mean extreme, I mean extreme, like something really awful happens, like someone very close to you, like a child or a spouse or a parent ends up in the hospital, please talk to me. I mean, I'm not a tell of the hun. We can work something out. But it has, please also, this has got to be something real, not a made up event, adventure. So just talk to me and we can work something out, okay? But uh, late work is only accepted for one week and half credit. If you come to me uh, three months into a class and want to make something up from week one, the answer will be no. Um, may you work ahead? Absolutely. Early is always okay. I have people who sometimes want to go on a hunting trip or they are going to stand up in a wedding and they ask, can I, can I work ahead so I just don't have to worry about stuff for that week or two week period of time? Absolutely. I don't have any problem with that. I open the entire class up at the beginning unless I'm doing some edits and then I try and be months ahead of you usually, but uh, you can always, always work ahead. Dropped grades. The computer itself I program it so that one of your quizzes, one of your labs, and one of your study guides, and you're going to do one of these weekly, one of those will automatically be dropped. And I program the computer to drop your lowest grade in each one of these categories. Why? Life happens. Everybody gets a family emergency, an ill, you get ill yourself, you have an ill family member, you have a car that won't start, you have a job situation, you have a uh, emotional situation. Hey, it happens to all of us. That's the nature of being human. And so you get a, you get a goodie. You get, everybody gets a, a treat because we all have life that happens. Please be aware this dropped grade starts happening immediately. So it doesn't kick in at the end of the semester or the term. Uh, sometimes people look at me after week one or two and they say, how come I, my first grade, which was perfect, is dropped? Because you're such a good student, the computer has nothing low to drop. So it's hold it in the bank. Maybe by the end of the semester, something happens. And if nothing happens, yay, that means you have great, great grades. Time commitment. Um, Please be aware that online doesn't mean there is no time to put in. I also teach a face-to-face -face version of this class. When I teach this class face-to-face, -face, there are two hours of lectures per week. So the videos that you watch per week will be somewhere around two hours. Um, I don't mind if you watch me double fast, if you can handle that, that's up to you. But just be aware that's the, what it's going to be. And then students 
usually come in for a two-hour lab in a face-to-face -face class. So that's four-hour commitment if you were taking this in a face-to-face -face version. Plus homework time to read the book, fill out that reading guide or study guide, and then review prior to the quiz. So typically it's going to be a six hour per week commitment if you are taking astronomy. If you're taking it online, count on six hour per week commitment. If you can do it in less than that, yay you, but um, I just don't want anybody surprised when they go, oh my gosh, I have to put time in. Well, yeah, that's the nature of education. I also want you to be aware of the fact if you were taking this class in the summer, summer does oper operate twice as fast and it can be up to 12 hours per week if you are putting in all the time that you need to. And of course, that's going to vary depending upon your scientific background, your prior knowledge, and uh, just your overall scientific skills. Okay, guys, that is going to end for part one. Um, I am going to come back in part two, and we're going to talk about labs and take a tour of the course itself. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.